Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about Q fever. Q fever means that quarry fever. It was first found in a group of worker in Abotair in Australia and the exact cause of the fever was not diagnosed. So the physician put a quarry and its name is placed as Q fever. Eventually it is found that this is a genetic disease that is transmitted from animal to animal, animal to human and it is caused by Coxiella barnetti. Coxiella barnetti is a gram negative intracellular bacteria. So it may enter the macrophages and it may be a part of the phagolysosome and it may survive inside the cell. It may survive outside the cell for many years too. Transmission of Q fever through inhalation of aerosols or dust contaminated with Coxella barnetti, close contact with infected animal like cattle, sheep, goat, pig and their birth fluid. Birth fluid means the amniotic fluid, the placenta, umbilical cord related fluid and the excreta. So a person has contact with infected animal, animal's birth fluid or excreta may get the Q fever infection. Consumption of unpasteurized dairy product, milk or dairy products. Rarely human to human transmission via sexual contact. Reservoirs include bird, rabies, ticks, kangaroos. So, consumption of unpasteurized dairy product or milk is an important cause of Q fever. It may be also consumption of the infected animal meat that may be a cause of Q fever too. Okay, or the person who work in the farm with the animal, in contact with the animal or the veterinarian or people who work in the slaughterhouse are more prone to develop Q fever. Okay, so what is the epidemiology? Epidemiology, it is a worldwide distributed disease. People who come in contact with the infected animal, occupational exposure occur among farmers, veterinarians, butchers, meat packers, seasonal migrant workers. Clinical feature, about 50% cases are asymptomatic. Incubation period is two to three weeks. Acute infection is a self-limiting influenza-like illness, fever, fatigue, pneumonia, hepatitis, and pericarditis. Okay, so this is the image I picked up from Microsoft PowerPoint online. This is from Australia, Australian website here. And we are looking at the person getting the infection through inhalation of Edison, through ingestion of the milk or dairy product. Okay. And these are the reservoirs. So it is not confined to this. It is also going to the kangaroo, to the dog, cat. Okay. So main source is the cattle, sheep goat pig okay so we got that these are the tick also act as a reservoir but from tick to human infection is most unlikely it is from tick to animal is more common q fever from tick to animal is more common than that of tick to human it is a vector for the for the q fever especially for other animals Okay, 
So, key fever clinical feature chronic infection primarily occurs in patients with existing valvular heart disease, vascular abnormalities, or immunosuppression. Immunosuppression for taking the steroid or taking chemotherapeutic drug due to chronic diabetes mellitus uncontrolled. So, this person is prone to develop Q fever. Q fever during pregnancy are at risk of adverse pregnancy outcome. It can go through the transplacentary, may damage the fetus or the MRI. Chronic complications of chronic Q fever include endocarditis, endovascular infection, hepatitis, and lung disease. Diagnosis. Detection of antibody response to phase 1 and phase 2 antigen response is the test of choice. PCR assay, immunohistochemistry of infected tissue, direct isolation of the agent via culture. You have to remember that Q fever is a nationally notifiable disease. Okay. Treatment, how can you treat a patient with Q fever? Treatment choice is the tetracycline, specifically doxycycline, the treatment of choice for acute infection. Some person cannot take doxycycline due to pregnancy or age younger than 8 years. Then in that situation, alternate drug is cotrimaxazone. Cotamoxazole is also contraindicated in first trimester of pregnancy. So, we may have other drugs like that of rifampicin, okay, maybe fluoroquinolone. So, in case of chronic infection, we give more than one drug like rifampicin plus hydroxychloroquine, okay, or fluoroquinolone. An asymptomatic patient does not require treatment. Long term treatment is required for chronic disease. Prevention is the key. Avoidance of infected animal if possible. Avoid consumption of unpasteurized, unpasteurized milk or dairy product. Okay. And staying away from the excreta or the birth fluid of the animal which are the potential reservoir or are the infected animal carrying the Q fever organism. You have to remember that there is no vaccine for Q fever available in the United States of America, but effective vaccine is available in Australia. Okay, and that's all about the Q fever. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends. Please support my channel. Please subscribe me. Have a nice, wonderful and blessed day. Bye now.